In this video, we are going to see how resource allocation graphs can be used for deadlock avoidance. When we discussed these resource allocation graph in detail in the earlier video, we have seen that they are suitable for systems with only one instance of each resource type. So here we are having these resources R1, R2, R3 and R4 and there is only one instance of each of this resource class. So RAG can be used in such a system to avoid deadlocks. We know that RAGs they consist of vertices and edges and the vertices are the set of processes P in this example P1, P2 and P3 and the set of resources are R1, R2, R3 and R4. The edges are of two type, the request edge that means a particular process is requesting for a particular resource like in this case P1 is requesting for R1 so this is a request edge. The assignment edge represents that a particular resource has been assigned to a particular process. Here we can see that this edge is the assignment edge which shows that this instance of R2 has been assigned to process P1. Now let's see how a resource allocation graph can be used for deadlock avoidance. So we know that the avoidance algorithms, they require that each process must declare the resources they want prior to execution. So these resources, they must be claimed by the processes a priori. That means before they begin execution, each process declares how many resources it wants. Now apart from the assignment and the request edge over here, now for this avoidance algorithms, we will have one more edge which is called the claim edge. Claim edge represents that a particular process PI may require a particular resource RJ in future. Now this is because each process has declared the resources it wants. So though currently it is not using or requesting them but it may claim them in future. So we can see that in this graph over here R1 has been already allocated to P1 so this is an assignment edge. We also see that P2 is requesting for resource R1 so this is a request edge. Currently they do not require R2 but in future they might want to claim R2 so we have these claim edges which are showed by a dashed line which shows that in future P1 may require R2 and P2 may also claim R2. Now whenever a process requests a resource so suppose P2 is right now having a claim edge to R2. It has not requested it but in future when it will request the resource this claim edge will be converted to a request edge. So right now this is a dashed line but actually this will be converted into a request edge now. So now this is showing that now P2 is actually requesting for this resource R2 and whenever a process releases a resource the assignment edge will be reconverted to a claim edge. So currently R1 is assigned to P1 but when P1 releases R1 when it when P1 does not require R1 any longer then this assignment edge will be converted to a claim edge and it will be represented by a dashed line again. Now let's say that this request of P2 which is wanting this resource R2. Suppose we say that R2 is allocated to P2. What is the job of the avoidance algorithm to see that if a particular resource is allocated to a process, will it lead to a deadlock or not? So suppose we say that R2 is allocated to P2 by the system. So now this request edge will now be converted to an assignment edge because R2 will be allocated to P2. Now if we look at this resource allocation graph, we can see that there is a 
cycle in this graph and this is representative of a deadlock. That means if R2 is allocated to P2, it may lead to deadlock in future. Why? Because if P1 now wants R2 and R2 is allocated to P2 and P2 wants R1 and R1 is allocated to P1. So this kind of a cycle will lead to a deadlock. So this means that if R2 is allocated to P2, it may lead to deadlock. So this R2 must not be given to P2. So it should not be assigned to P2. It simply shows that this allocation should be avoided to avoid the deadlock. So even before granting a particular resource to a process, the system will check whether the allocation will lead to deadlock or not. And since it is leading to a deadlock, it will not allocate this resource to the process. Had it not resulted in a cycle, then the resource will be allocated to the process. So this is how resource allocation graphs can be used for deadlock avoidance.